So let's start opening Gemma Pro. And the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm selecting the database, in this case, general stills. Um, for this particular example, I'm going to show some phase predictions and also some quick CCT and TTT diagrams. So I'm going to select like a default uh, composition. In this case, I'm going to load a composition, and those are some uh, standard compositions that are in, included in Gemma Pro. So I'm going to select 4140 for now. And here is the different composition that it's already loaded. Uh, then I'm just going to include some uh, some nitrogen. I'm going to put like some 100 ppm of nitrogen in the composition just to include it in the calculations. So I'm going to uh, calculate some uh, phase prediction. So I'm going to go for extender general uh, between 1600 at 600, the uh, calculation. And I'm going to include all of the phases. So let's start the calculation. And I'm doing a time step of 10 in this case. We can just reduce the time step if we want to do a faster calculations or refine the time step if we want more accurate, but it's going to be obviously more computationally uh, costly. So it's going to take longer time to solve. Uh, let's wait for a couple of seconds. And we obtain our faces here. So in this case, uh, if we go to, obviously we have different properties that we can extract uh, from these calculations, but when we're interested in phases, so we have the different predictions of the phases, we can uncheck particular phases just to, you know, highlight it. In this case, for example, the liquid, and we'll see that the liquid goes high temperature uh, up to around uh, 1496, and that's when it started to uh, solidify. So that's what we call the solidus, liquidus temperature. And also we have our solidus temperature in this case, 1421. We can include the other phases. So let's see the main phases. So we have some liquid, we have some delta ferrite, small amount. And after that, precipitate the austenite. So in this case, we can see also our AC3 temperature, AR in this case, AR3, 780, and AR1, in this case, 722. Uh, now, if we want to see the tails of the other phases, for example, this cementite is much lower here in this case, but we can just see the other main or the other uh, main precipitants. And because they are small phases, I, I'm, I am unchecking, unchecking the main phases. So we have the manganese sulfide, which comes from the 1400 plus temperature. We have also a carbide that's coming in from this temperature. And we also have a nitrite that is forming above this temperature, around 700 or so, 730. So for example, this one is a nitrite that we don't know. It's a metallic nitrite. We don't know exactly the composition. If we want to see, if we want to check the composition of this nitrite, what we could do is check here in composition of the phase, click and select the nitrite, the metallic nitrite. And basically, it's telling me uh, the different temperature, the composition of that nitride. So basically, it's telling me that it's, this nitride is rich in chromium and nitrogen. So it's a chromium nitride. But also, we have some uh, carbon. So it could be a carbon nitride, by the way. And we have some moly as well. So chromo, chromium, moly, carbon nitride. I could say that could be related to. So those are the different phases that we obtain from this analysis. Now, if we go to uh, uh, the main options again, we are going to see uh, that we can also calculate for this composition at TTT and CCT diagrams. Um, uh, usually, I just do a quick analysis using the quick CCT and TTT. And if we want more accurate and more uh, detailed uh, diagrams, we can go by, by the advanced TTT and CCT. For now, I'm going to use just the quick because it's much faster. So I'm going to just use uh, default uh, microns, uh, initial grain size, because the TTT and CCT, depending on the grains, the pre grain size. I'm going to select 100 microns, for example. That's the pre grain size. And the austenitization temperature, for example, in this case, 50 degrees above A, uh, the austenitization temperature of A3. I can choose uh, manually another temperature. So I'm going to leave this one by default, another this one, other options default as well. Uh, start the calculation. So let's wait a couple of seconds there. Um, 
So depending on your alloy, you could have a different grain size. Usually for castings, the grain size could vary, you know, largely. Uh, for another steel, could go between 50 and 100 microns. So those are the results in the left right left side CCT and the other side TTT, the main phases that are predicted. Uh, and here you also see some of the transition temperatures that are important to notice. So we have the uh, formation of ferrite, formation of perlite, when they start to form perlite by night, and also some martensite starting 50% and 90% martensite. Um, so we have the, we, we see here the common um, TTT uh, curve. So the top part of the curves represent some um, ferritic perlitic transformations. And the lower part represents some bidetic transformations, especially upper and lower by night. And also the, the MS and MF temperatures in this case. I guess is MS and M50 temperature. And MS is, uh, yeah, at the bottom here. Um, in the case of the continuous cooling, we have four cooling rates from 100 to 0 0.1 Celsius per second. And you can follow the path and just predict the different phases. So for example, in the 100 uh, Celsius per second, we have fully martensitic at room temperature after cooling. In the case of, for example, for 0.1, we're going to have first precipitating some percentage of ferrite. After that, it's going to form some perlite. And finally, probably a small amount of bainite. And after that, basically everything is going to transform. So we don't have any martensite with this cooling rate. So we can just predict some you know, general phases using these uh, TTT and CCT curves for this particular alloy. 